set them free. From our fears and sins, release us. From our fears, release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Find our rest, find our rest in I, I did ask your pastor if he would let me uh, preach first this morning, and um, I appreciate you all accommodating uh, me on this. Um, I do have two ladies that are going to be baptized uh, this morning at my church, and I had not had the opportunity to talk with them and visit with them and kind of go through the process uh, that we go through, and so um, I kept looking at my time schedule, and I kept looking at my time schedule, and I finally reluctantly, reluctantly uh, talked to Mike, and I said, do you think I could preach first and get back to my church in time to kind of go over with these ladies uh, how, because uh, one of them is extremely nervous. In fact, she's kind of put off being baptized. She was saved several weeks ago, and she's kind of put off being baptized just because she's terrified. She is terrified, and we've talked to her and talked to her and talked to her and talked to her and let her know that, you know, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. And so finally, uh, she cons has consented. And so uh, I guess I'm kind of getting back early this morning primarily for her, for her to kind of show her the baptistry and show her how we're going to do this and try to set her mind at ease. So, again, I appreciate you all accommodating and, and, and allowing me to preach uh, first this morning, and, and I hope it wasn't too much of a problem, too much trouble, uh, and so again, thank you so much for that. Um, Thursday was Thanksgiving, and I hope you all had a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. Mind if I take this off here? There, whoo, okay, I can see now my glasses are not fogged up. 
Uh, but Thursday was Thanksgiving, and I hope you had a wonderful time to uh, spend with your family. And one of my Thanksgiving traditions, and it may be uh, one of yours as well, is as a family, we all go around the table and we share what we're thankful for. And we always look forward to that. I know it's a kind of a simple tradition, but it's a tradition that developed when my children were very, very young. We would sit down to eat for Thanksgiving, and then we would just say, let's go around the table and let's just share what we're thankful for before we pray and before we eat. And uh, uh, my children now are grown, but they still remember this tradition. In other words, if we sit down at the table and we don't go around the table and share what we're thankful for, they'll point it out. They'll go, wait a minute, wait a minute, we haven't gone around the table yet and shared what we're thankful for. And I think that's a great thing to do. I think it's an exciting thing to do that we share that God has been good to us. We share the good things that God has done, and, and that's what Thanksgiving is all about. So this morning I would like to direct your attention to a familiar story. It's in Mark, Mark chapter 5, and uh, it begins with verse 18. And it's about when Jesus was, uh, had crossed over and he had come to the other side after his, the storm on the ocean, on the sea of Galilee. And it says in verse 17, And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he, talking about Jesus, was coming to the ship... He that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. So if you remember the story, Jesus has come over across the Sea of Galilee, and he's come over into this, uh, the land of Genezareth is where he was, and there was a man who was demon-possessed. And this man that was demon-possessed, he lived in the graveyard. That's where he lived, and he uh, was, was out of his mind, he was crazy, he was violent, and he even inflicted punishment and uh, abuse on himself, and everybody, he was just so wild that even uh, several men could not uh, take this guy and subdue him. He was just crazy, out of his mind. Well, Jesus comes into this situation, and Jesus casts out this man's demons, and now this man is well. He's whole again. The, uh, he's a, he's a not demon-possessed anymore. He's not crazy anymore. He's not a wild man anymore. He's back to being a regular, normal person. Jesus healed him. Jesus healed him. And so this man is so happy. Wouldn't you be happy? Wouldn't you be happy if, you, if Jesus did a miracle like this in your life and all of a sudden you're whole again and you're well again and this man is so happy as anyone would be and he goes up to Jesus and he says, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. I want to go where you go. I want to walk where you walk. I want to be with you every day of my life because this thing that you have done for me is just so incredible. You gave me my life back. You gave me my life back. I want to follow you. And so you would sort of think that maybe Jesus would be so flattered that this man wants to give his life to Jesus by following him that Jesus would say, yes, come follow me. Yes, come walk with me. Yes, come be with me and be my disciple. But Jesus doesn't tell him to do that. Notice what Jesus tells him to do in verse 19. It says, how be it, Jesus suffered him not. He says, I, I really don't want you to walk with me and follow me, but this is what I want you to do. But saith unto him, go home. Go home. Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. I love this message. I love this message because this message Jesus said to this man, the most important thing you can do. More important than following me. More important than walking with me and being my disciple on a daily basis. More important, I want you to go home and I want you to talk about Jesus. I want you to go home and talk about Jesus. Now when you stop and you think about it, we like to talk, don't we? Don't we like to talk? Oh, I, we like to talk. We as human beings, we love to talk. From the time we wake up in the morning till the time we go to bed at night, we're talking. We're talking and we love to talk. Uh, I hope my wife is not watching this on Facebook, but my wife loves to talk. She does. My wife loves to talk. And uh, 
she will call me. She, she works at the Clark Memorial Hospital. And uh, she will call me when she gets off work. And she will talk to me from the time she pulls out of the hospital parking garage oh, all the way home. And so sometimes I'll take my phone and we're talking. And I'll say, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Um, I'm going to go get a sandwich. You know. <laughs> and then, yes, dear. And, uh, you know, and, and I say that in fun. I say that in fun. But, but we like to talk. We like to talk. That's something that we enjoy doing. We really enjoy talking. Um, and we can talk about anything in the world. We can talk about sports. We can talk about the weather. We can talk about uh, grandkids. I have three, two grandkids. I have two grandkids. I love them. I love them so much. And I love to talk about my grandkids. And uh, we can talk about, you know, all kinds of things. And we like to talk. It was interesting that Michael Collins, astronaut Michael Collins, was speaking at a banquet. And he said that the average man, the average man speaks 25,000 words a day. Wow. The average man speaks 25,000 words a day. The average woman speaks 30,000 words a day. And Michael Collins went on to say, he said, the only problem is when I come home from work, I've already spoken my 25,000, and my wife is just getting started on her 30,000. Wow, I see a lot of men nodding their heads up and down. Okay. One statistician said the average person spends 13 years of their lives talking. 13 years of their lives talking. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that incredible when you think about it? We spend 30, uh, 13 years of our lives speaking. And so, again, we don't have any problem talking. Not only do we not have any problem talking, do you know some people talk in their sleep? Some people talk in their sleep. That's the craziest thing in the world. My oldest daughter did that. My oldest daughter talked in her sleep, and it scared us to death. We didn't know what was going on. She would be in her, her bed at night, and she'd be having an argument with somebody, and we didn't know what was going on. We like to talk. We like to talk. And so this morning, what I want to share and suggest to us this morning is that since we do like to talk, that we as Christians, especially in this day and time, that we need to learn to talk about Jesus. Amen. We really need to learn to talk about Jesus because of the fact that today in this, again, the things of the world that are going on right now, if there's ever a time that we as Christians need to be talking about Jesus, it's today. It's today. Learning how to talk about Jesus. Jesus, because this is what Jesus said was important to this man who had been healed. This man was a crazy man. He was out of his mind. He could not lead a normal life like you and I lead, and Jesus healed him, and he's well, and he's a whole person now, and he goes to Jesus, and he says, I want to walk with you. I want to be with you. I want to be your disciple, and Jesus said, no, I can tell you something much more important i got a bigger job for you. i got something that's more important that I need you to do. And that job is to go back home to your family and talk about the good things that God has done in your life. Talk about the things that God has blessed you with. Let me just ask for a show of hands this morning. How many people God's done something good for you today, uh, this, this week or this month or in your lifetime? Everybody raise your hand and I know you would. I know you would because God has done something good for you. God has done something good for me. We need to be talking about that. We need to be talking about that. We need to be incorporating that into our conversations. We need to learn in our speaking and in our conversations how to talk about Jesus. How to talk about Jesus in our conversations and letting people know what God has done for us in our lives and how good that he has done things. I'm on the road a lot. I do a lot of driving. Uh, I'm a uh, bivocational pastor at Dabney Baptist Church and so every weekend I live in Greenville Indiana which is kind of just across the river from Louisville Kentucky and I drive two hours so I'm on the road two hours driving to uh, Dabney and then two hours driving back from Dabney but then also I teach in Louisville so it takes me 45 minutes to drive from my house to school I teach in Louisville so I'm on the road in Louisville 45 minutes going 45 minutes going home so I'm on the road a lot I'm on the road a lot and the Lord watches over me while I drive. Does the Lord watch over you while you drive? Does anybody need the Lord to watch over you while you drive? 
I remember one time there was this, uh, two, this couple was talking in a Sunday school class and they were talking about prayer and they were talking about how you can pray anywhere at any time. And this guy said, yeah, I pray while I'm driving. And his wife sitting next to him said, yeah, and I pray while he's driving too. But I'm on the road a lot and the Lord watches over me while I'm driving. And so I tell people that. I do, I tell people that when people talk to me and they go, man, you're on the road a lot. You know, you're, you're just traveling and traveling and traveling. And I said, yeah, and you know what? The Lord's with me every drive, every mile, every step of the way. The Lord is with me. And what am I doing? I'm giving God the glory because God watches over me while I drive. I'm not the best focused driver. And see which car I'm driving and stay away from me, okay? All right? Because I'm really, really not. I, I think about things while I'm driving. And my mind gets on other things while I'm driving. And the Lord keeps me in between the lines. Keeps me in between the lines. But my point on this is the fact that talk about what God has done for you. And God has blessed me. And God has done miracles for me, you know, when I drive, whatever I'm doing. And we need to talk about that. We need to talk about that. We as Christians need to learn to talk about Jesus. Need to learn to talk about Jesus. Uh, is uh, Carol the secretary here this morning? Huh? She's not here? Well, I, I didn't want, I, I wanted to apologize to her, kind of, because she called me this week and she goes, what are you going to be preaching about on Sunday? And I said, talking about Jesus. And she goes, okay, I'll put down talking about Jesus. And, and I thought, oh no, she took that the wrong way. She just thought, you know, in his sermon, he's just going to talk about Jesus in his sermon. That's how he's going to do it. And I thought, I need to apologize to her. I need to apologize to her because that really is the title of my message was talking about Jesus. And I didn't want her to be offended thinking, oh, he's just being snide with me. And he's just going to talk about Jesus. That's what he's going to do in his sermon. But we need to learn as Christians to talk about Jesus. We need to learn to talk about Jesus whenever we're having conversation. Do you have any, com any problem talking about the weather? No. Do you have any problem talking about whatever? Do y'all know it's supposed to snow Monday? Don't know it's supposed to snow money in it crazy? It's supposed to snow. But, but it snows eventually. I mean, you know, so we know it's going to snow. But see, I didn't have any trouble talking to you all about that. That was easy. But can we talk to people in conversation about Jesus? Can we talk about Jesus? Can we talk about Jesus? There's this African-American lady that I work with, that I teach school with. That lady loves to talk about Jesus. And you know you're not supposed to talk about Jesus in the classroom? you know you're not supposed to talk about Jesus in the classroom? They didn't tell her, apparently. Apparently, she didn't get the email. I don't know, but this lady is a jewel. She is a jewel because she finds a way to talk about Jesus no matter what the conversation is. And I love that lady. I love that lady because that's the way I want to be. I want to be that kind of person that no matter who I'm talking to, a stranger on the street or a kid in a classroom or my cousin or my uncle or whoever it is, I want to talk about Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus. And we have reason to talk about Jesus. Look at this man. This man was demon-possessed. This man was living in the graveyard, and God healed him. And he's got something to say. He's got something to talk about. You have something to talk about. Everybody in this room has something to talk about that God has done for you in your life. And I want to tell you something. This is, this is really important. This is really, really important. Our world wants to hear good news. Now, folks, we've got to get this. We've got to get this. This is so important. Our world wants some good news, and nobody has good news like we have good news. And so the devil has lied to us. The devil has lied to us, and he has said, you can't talk about Jesus. The devil has lied to us and said, nobody wants to hear your religion. The devil has lied to us and said, you don't want to talk about Jesus because people think you're goody-goody. People think you're a wacko. Think you're a religious you know, fanatic and all this kind of stuff. You can't talk about Jesus. The devil has lied to us because people want to hear good news. Folks, you live out there. I live out there. You know people want to hear good news today. People want to hear that there's still a God in heaven on the throne. People want to hear that there's still a God in heaven that, that heals the sick. People want to hear that there's still a God in heaven that when you need help, He will come and He will help you and strengthen you, encourage you. People want to hear this. 
They want to hear this. And so when we, the devil starts saying to you, don't talk about Jesus, don't talk about Jesus, you're, you're, just, you're just imposing yourself. You're imposing your religion. You're imposing your, your, your Christianity. Don't listen to that lie. People want to hear good news. People want to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And they're hungry. They're hungry. They're hungry, so hungry to hear the good news about Jesus Christ. And we can share it. We can share it. We can talk about Jesus. And the funny thing is, is we can talk about Jesus anywhere. We can talk about Jesus in any conversation. And we can give him the glory for what he's done in our lives. When I was together with my family, my kids grew up preacher's kids. And, and, and I always feel sorry for them for that. But they turned out okay. I mean, you know, they're in their 30s now, and they all seem to be fairly normal. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate my kids. I appreciate them so very much because of the fact that they had to grow up preacher's kids. But it was interesting. We were talking, and uh, my wife said to my kids, she goes, you know, when you all were younger, and I would tell you all things, well, my kids, one of the things I did, and I left this part out, was one of the things that I did was always when I preached, I would use my family as a preaching illustration, and they hated that. Oh, they hated that. They hated that. They just knew Dad was going to tell a story. You know, whatever happened during the week, that's going to come out in Dad's sermon on Sunday. You know, Dad's going to uh, tell, that, tell that story. So, and and I, I apologized to him. I apologized to him. I said, yeah, I, I did do that. And so, uh, but it was interesting that the, my kids take on this because my wife said to me, she goes, now when, you're, when you all were small talking about my kids, she said, I would tell you something and it would go in one ear and out the other. That's what she would tell my kids. She said, I'd tell you something, it would go in one ear and out the other. And they said, well, that's better than that. Because whenever you tell dad, it went in one ear and came out of his mouth. And that's pretty much true. That's pretty much true. It's time for us as Christians to open our mouths. And I really believe it. I really believe that the power in this country, and I really believe that the power in this nation is going to come from its churches. This church, my church, that church, that church, that's where the power of this nation is going to come from. And I believe that with all my heart. I really do believe it. And I believe it's these local churches with faith congregation that I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at a faithful congregation that is the power that's in this country right now because of our faith and because of the fact that we're willing to talk about Jesus. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're not ashamed to speak up for our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done in our lives. I remember talking to Bob this morning. Bob greeted me. When I came in and we were talking about how important and probably one of the greatest things that we are doing as local congregations is we're keeping the doors open. We're keeping the doors open. We're keeping the doors open. And I work in Louisville, Kentucky, and so most of my news comes out of Louisville, Kentucky, and the governor of, Louisville, uh, the governor of Kentucky is calling for all churches to shut down. He's calling for all churches to close their doors. He's calling for all churches not to have in-person gatherings. Makes sense, scientific data, all this kind of stuff. But I heard a story, and this story stirred me so to my core, and I heard it just this week. There was a man and kind of a rough character, and he'd done a lot of things in his life that he was ashamed of. And his wife, dear loving wife, led him to the Lord and accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. He was saved, he was a new man. And he goes, I want my family to have what I have. And so he went to his family, and he told them about Jesus, and he wanted them to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And he says, let's all go to church together. And they'd never been to church. 
They'd never been to church, and they said, well, where do you want to go to church? And he goes, well, let's just go to the church right down here, right down from our house. And he loaded all of his family into this car, and they drove down to that church. And I bet you'll never guess what happened when they got there. Doors were closed. Doors were locked. Parking lot was empty. They went and shook on the doors. Nobody there. He had a car full of people that wanted to know Christ as Savior and were ready. And they went down to the church, and the church was... Keep the doors open. You keep the doors open. And God's people will prevail. God will prevail. Didn't you tell me that this morning? Didn't you tell me God's going to prevail? You told me that this morning, that God is going to prevail. So that's why we need to learn to talk about Jesus. We need to learn to talk about Jesus. So when you go out today, men, and you use your 25,000 words, ladies, when you go out today and you use your 30,000 words, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Because I believe with all my heart, people are hungry. People are hungry to hear about Jesus. People don't want to talk about politics. People don't want to talk about, you know, this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. They want to hear something that's going to help them. And Jesus Christ is going to help us. Talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful. This world has tried to do a lot. But yet, God, I'm thankful that from the testimony of your people that we know, God, that you are still on the throne. And I really believe, God, that as Christians, it is so important that we don't just roam around in this world buying into all the things that we hear because it's just negative but Lord it's time for us as Christians to rise up and Lord I believe I'm seeing this I believe we're seeing this I believe we're seeing this all over our world I believe we see Christians that are rising up Christians in the Versailles Baptist Church Christians in the Dabney Baptist Church Christians all over our community and Christians all over our nation that are standing up and saying you know what I want to talk about Jesus that's what I want to talk about I want to talk about what God has done in my life because God has been good to me, God has blessed me, God has blessed my family. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about that there's a hope in the world. I want to talk about that, that Jesus has the power to change a life. That's what I want to talk about. And so, Lord, that's my prayer for this congregation today, for my congregation, for myself individually. Lord, help me to open my mouth. Help me to open my mouth. Lord, open the mouths of this people. Open our mouths that we can talk about Jesus and give God the glory for what he's doing and give God the praise for the wonderful things that he's done in our lives and just open our mouths and just let praise for the Lord come out and that everybody around us, they'll be encouraged. They'll be excited. They'll go, wow, there's hope. There's hope because people are talking about Jesus. So, Father, that's my prayer today, and that's my prayer that, Lord, that you would move in this way. And so I just give you thanks for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be with this congregation today. I pray you'll bless them. I pray you'll bless Mike Cantrell as pastor of this congregation, that you'll continue to lead him and lead them, Lord, and that they're just going to be such an incredible shining light in this community, and their mouths are going to be open, and Jesus is going to be proclaimed. And I really believe you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for letting me be with you uh, today, and God bless you, and I love being with you, and I'm going to uh, step out and go, but thank you so much for letting me be here today. Thank you so much.
Today is the first day of Advent, and the theme for the first Sunday of Advent is hope. The scripture is Isaiah 9, verse 2, verses 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. He opened his eyes and tried to focus, a new world of sensations assaulting his senses. Hands were touching the human skin that protected his wildly beating heart. He inhaled the pungent odor of animals with every breath, and the sounds, his own cries, his mother's soothing words, the bleating and lowing of animals. And off in the distance, a song, somehow vaguely familiar. Stars glittered in the black Bethlehem sky, so this is what they look like from Earth. So this is what it feels like to be human. <laughs> They sang him to sleep, but they marveled at the promises this baby came to keep. His father must have felt at once great sadness and great joy as God watched his little baby born. For this was heaven. Child, this was heaven's child in an earthen stable, wrapped in glory, meek and mild. Joseph wept with wonder as Mary sweetly smiled because they knew this was. Child. 
And uh, I thought I was nervous. And Nancy's nervous, so that makes me feel better. <laughs> Maybe I'm not so nervous. It's more of it. But uh, is, is there any announcements anyone had? announcement here in the bulletin I would emphasize this morning is the monthly business meeting this coming Wednesday night. Uh, we'll be voting on the budget and, and our officers for, for the next year. The finance committee has completed the figures and has the budget ready to be voted on. The nominating committee has listed the candidates to be voted on. We will have the meeting in the uh, Family Life Center and we'll uh, practice social distancing. Please plan to attend uh, this important meeting. Also, it has been decided because of the virus that we will not be distributing the Christmas cards like we have been doing in the past year. Please mail your cards. So, the business meeting, and uh, we need attendance at the business meeting. background, keeping us going. Uh, any, any other announcements? Okay, we'll have a scripture read this time. It's, it's in the bulletin there. It's uh, taken from Psalms 27, and verses 13 and 14. It says, I have de despaired unless I have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait on the Lord. Psalms 27, 13, and 14.
is a request. Do anyone have any praises or a prayer request this morning? spoken. It's always among spoken. Yeah. Well, let's, let's bow our heads and go ahead and we'll pray this time. Our God and Heavenly Father, we uh, do thank the Lord for this time and opportunity to come to thy house. And, and Lord, uh, we can worship you in spirit and truth. And Lord, we thank you for those, uh, those, those that uh, ventured out this morning. And, and uh, Lord, we pray that you bless them, Lord, for their, for their attendance here this day. And Lord, we pray uh, for the prayer request that's been made known this day, Lord, and, and all the other the, the unspoken, Lord. And, and Lord, we pray for those, all those that are, that are uh, sick, and Lord, those that are uh, contemplating, Lord, surgery, and those that are, are recovering, Lord, from surgery, that you be with each one. And Lord, we know that you're the great healer, and, and all healing will come from you. And, and Lord, we pray that you just bless them, Lord, in, in a special way. This day, and go with us, Lord, through the rest of this, this service and through the rest of this day. And Lord, we give you praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now.
And it wouldn't be a Baptist if you didn't have an invitation. So you kind of skipped over that.